uh, type of testing is genetic testing. And genetic testing is in the news a lot right now because um, Trump is trying to change this. But you're protect we're protected by the Title II of GINA, which is Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act. And an employer can't genetically test you um, and deny employment because of it. And there's actually a new law right now, um, or Trump's trying to pass a new law, which says that employees could be genetically tested for the wellness program in the company, but that's going to cause a lot of problems. So I don't know if it's getting passed or not. And then... Um, <coughs> okay, so that was the ban the box, the background checks and employment testing, and kind of how they go in order through the hiring process um, for the hiring laws. And for my new and you, well, I work at a hospital, and we had um, an applicant who lied on their, we could, like, we're exempt from being in the box because we're a hospital, so we're allowed to ask the question. And he had said that he was never convicted of a crime, and he was a really good candidate for the position, um, but when we did the background check, we found out that he was convicted of a crime, and that... Um, if he had checked yes and like explained the situation, then he might have had more of a chance. But you can't really lie on a job application. So because of that, we had to deny him the employment. And now let's see you. <laughs> We're going to do another quick timeout. It's on pause now, right? Oh, don't walk away. <laughs> okay, while I am fixing the camera, see I got the wrong part and it's off kilter and I'm just making excuses now. Hi. Okay, questions for you. Ban the box means that you cannot ask about convictions until the person's been in the door, right? Mm -hmm. So you can still ask, yeah. but you, ha you can't ask prior to them seeing somebody in the company. And you said that a couple of different ways, but I was just making sure that everybody understood that. You can still ask on a piece of paper, but you have to have interviewed them first. Yeah. Um, if you do any type of background check, even if you do it on your own, if you're doing criminal or financial, you still need consent, not just when you farm it to outside agencies. Um, there was one other thing that I... The negligent hiring is a problem with Ban the Box, because you don't want to put somebody that's been accused of assault next to your other employees. So it really is, for HR professionals, a very difficult... I mean, look at that timber guy, two days on the job, Background checks don't come back that fast. Yeah. Um, titles. I guess I should talk about this later. When you talk about a president or a professor, you should use their titles because it offends some people very much. So if somebody's a CEO or a vice president, be sure to put that title in there. Um, anyway. My name is Danielle, and I'm going to be speaking to you about affirmative action. I will go over what affirmative action is, an affirmative action plan, what is the goal, how is it determined, how do we achieve it, what are the outreach efforts to achieve that goal, and the advantages and disadvantages of affirmative action. Affirmative action refers to the idea that society should increase the presence of minorities and women in the workplace and education because of a history of prejudice that leaves minorities and women at a competitive disadvantage. Support for affirmative action has sought to achieve these goals. The first use of affirmative action to increase ethnic diversity occurred in 1961 when President Kennedy presented, a, presented an executive order that required government contractors to take affirmative action in hiring of more minorities and women and ending workplace discrimination. In 1971, President Nixon followed suit. Affirmative action tends to increase ethnic diversity in the workplace at a faster rate than normal market forces. For example, the percent of black males in government contract labor increased 2% between 1974 and 1980 compared to a 0.6% in non-contractor jobs. 
An example of an affirmative action in the workplace is Reed C. versus Desfano, where both white and Hispanic candidates went for a promotion in a fire department. They sued after their examinations were discarded because not enough candidates from other racial groups passed their test. The court ruled five and four in their favor, stating that their rights had been violated. Another example in the workplace is Johnson versus the Transportation Agency. This case was brought by a male employee who was passed over for a female employee for a promotion. The court found out that the plan did not violate the protection against discrimination on the basis of sex in the Civil Rights Act of 1964. This fact I found interesting, in the 1960s, a bank could refuse to issue a credit card to an unmarried woman. Even if she was married, she had to have her husband co-sign. It wasn't until the Equal Credit Opportunity Act of 1974 that it became illegal to refuse a credit card to a woman based on her gender. There are advantages and disadvantages in affirmative action in the workplace. Some of the advantages that I will touch upon are diversity, increased opportunities, and moral commitment. Some of the disadvantages are reverse discrimination and stigmatization. Affirmative action has benefits that go beyond complying with legal requirements. Increasing ethnic diversity improves small business because the company has a more diverse pool of talent to pull from. Without that, there is, without that, there's no diversity plan. To compete on the global market, companies need different perspectives to spark creativity. Voluntary affirmative action plans are much more dangerous than legally required required AA strategies because these plans could become grounds for reverse discrimination lawsuits. To prevent this type of litigation, voluntary affirmative action plans should reflect the intent of anti-discrimination laws. Affirmative action does not allow quotas. It does not allow extending preferences to any individual based on race, color, religion, gender, or national origin. It does not allow merit selection procedures to be superseded by affirmative action programs. What is an affirmative action plan? An affirmative action plan is a management tool designed to ensure equal employment opportunity. It contains a diagnostic component designed to evaluate the composition of the company's workforce and compare it to the composition of the rel relevant labor pool. The goal of affirmative action is established with the percentage of minorities or women employed in a particular job group less than less than could be reasonably expected given their availability percentage in that particular job group. Placement goals serve as targets that could be reasonably met by applying every good faith to make the plan work. An affirmative action goal does not create or set aside for specific groups. It does not require the company to hire a person who lacks the minimum qualifications for a job or hire a less qualified person in a preference to a more qualified one. The goal of affirmative action is a diverse workforce. What should you do if there is a goal set by the business you work for? Where a placement goal is set, the department develop action-oriented steps to increase the recruitment and training for minorities and women or both. Outreach efforts work best with action-oriented programs if they are specific and are well, or well executed. Some examples of action-oriented programs are the recruitment of applicants in professional publications or journals focusing on women, minorities, veterans, and or persons with disabilities. There also should be mentoring programs focused on these same groups. Equal opportunity and affirmative accommodation language should be in all announcements. Most of you will have a role in the affirmative action plan being in an HRM role. You will help provide the training and development and the implementation. You will provide technical assistance <coughs> and training to supervisor employees. You will have to compile and submit a statistical report for the company and possibly for federal submission. One example that I can give in regards to affirmative action <coughs> is that I had a female family member who stayed the same day, who started the same day as another employee who was a male at Boeing many years ago. When Boeing had layoffs, my family member lost their job. However, the male employee did not. She consulted a lawyer and was going to bring suit against them, but ended up retiring. The debate still continues to affirmative action is still needed. <coughs> the answer, unfortunately, is not a simple yes or no. Affirmative action policies are controversial, have not been a cure-all for discrimination, and cannot be completed, completely eradicated. 
We will never eliminate discrimination and racism through public policy. Often small businesses are advised to implement their own affirmative action plan because a workplace that lacks sufficient diversity could be viewed as discriminatory. So whether you start a position with a company that has an affirmative action plan or you have to create one, it is something that all companies should have. This concludes my explanation for affirmative action. Next up is Don. Okay, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Financial background checks. You mentioned as well, and before, um, that's what I was going to say. They don't actually look at your credit report. And I think that's what everybody thinks when they hear a financial background check, you know, what your number is, your score, mm -hmm. it's not what they look at. They have to look at other stuff, like have you ever kited checks, or have you ever uh, been bankrupt, or some other things like that, but they're not allowed to look at your credit score. Mm -hmm. I just told them that out there, because it really is something that's counterintuitive. Yeah. I didn't, I, I thought it was what you thought. Yeah. 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 Anyway, great job on both sides of the AP. Thanks. Hello class, I'm Donald Brown, and tonight I'll be talking about child labor laws, and I'll discuss the history, uh, the penalty if you break the rule, um, I'll also discuss how labor is used in other countries, pros and cons, and a uh, new and new. So 200 years ago, child labor was a big deal in the U.S. Kids were kind of looked upon to do work. Uh, heavy, heavy uh, lifting, you know, work on farms and the mines, and very difficult work that was not requested of kids today. So, um, in 1836, Massachusetts passed the first law for child labor laws. It was if you work more than 10 hours a day, you have to have three hours worth of um, education. And in 1938, it became a federal law. So, child labor laws fall under the FLSA, which is the Fair Labor Standards Act. These laws are meant to protect children and make sure they get an education, as well as keep them safe in the workplace. They don't want the kids doing the dangerous jobs like construction. And doing research, I tried to find how often the rule is broken, but uh, there's not really much saying the statistics of how many times the law is broke. So um, there was not many things I could really talk about about breaking the law. Yet the penalty was easy to find. For breaking the law, just one, for one person, one child in your company, that's $10,000 per kid. And then if he's injured or killed, that's at least $50,000. And if you repeat multiple times of child labor, it can cost you $100,000 in prison. So child labor in other countries, as you can see, um, they're all in the category extreme. Uh, ranking doesn't really matter because they're all tied. So the reason that all these countries are listed up there is because they are not very wealthy. Um, the U.S. is very lucky to have laws, so we don't have to work like this. The reason that the children work so hard over there is because they're doing anything they can to get by. It's not that they're getting paid, it's just they're working for survival. And Walmart. Everyone knows the famous Walmart, known for their cheap, cheap prices and whatnot. But what we don't know is that they had 24 violations in 2005 over three different states. They were charged over $100,000, which probably means nothing to them since they have millions or billions, whatever they have at this point. But what they were caught for was there was people under the age of 16 using chainsaws to cut down Christmas trees. There was uh, also people under 18 operating forklifts in warehouses. And there was also uh, kids using paper bailers, which are very dangerous machines. Another thing. Uh, in the U.S., children at the age of 12 are allowed to work on tobacco farms. The Obama administration made all this big fuss about, you know, don't let uh, children smoke, ban e-cigarettes to minors, and uh, all this nicotine ban. 
But what they didn't even notice was all the children.